I met a gypsy. You know, and that's where it's like in life now, you know, you look back and you're like, man, it had I just done it that one more time. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it could have changed everything. I, I've heard you say a couple of times, like you didn't have the right people around you. Like what, yeah. what did that look like? <sighs> I mean, when you have someone, you know, that, that you're around your whole life and, and then, you know, you go a separate way and, and you're young, um, you're very, let's say, gullible, right? You know, vulnerable. And, you, and you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. Because I was never around, you know, stuff like that. So then you, then you hire, you know, people around you and, and they lead you down a pathway that uh, they make you believe is okay. You know, that, that this is, this is okay. You can just rely on your talent. Like, you know, you're working hard you know, you're doing good. Like you don't want to go for a bike ride. No worries. Let's just, just like go yes here. man type stuff. Yeah. Yes, yeah. man. Oh my God, it's bad. Yeah. And, and it, it turned it, my mindset to where if I didn't feel like moto and I just go home, I just do it tomorrow. Mm. You know, that, that tomorrow was always there. Mm. It's all it wasn't. And, uh, the people that were around me for a majority of my career were, were yes men. And it's not like I did terrible. I had a career that people sometimes would dream about. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Let's sure. face it. But not the one that I dreamt about. Yeah. And that's a big regret in my life, I would say. But also it's it's a lesson learned. Yeah. You know, now I can take what I've learned, the mistakes that I made, and I can instill them and in, and make sure that it doesn't happen with someone like a Julian, yeah. you know, who's still young and growing. You know, Benny's obviously old and and on a 450 now. He's not he's not young anymore. You know, but with someone like Julian who's so young, 17 years old, I can do that to where I can help him push right now that one more time. Yeah. You know, yeah, to yeah. get to the other side to where he's like, wow, you know, I'm not gonna lead him down the drinking path or the bad eating path or the going out at night path or or you know, just being stupid with your friends and, and not caring so much about training. Like, no, dude, like, I don't care if you're tired, you're going. Yeah. You know, it, it's, I can do that now because it's a lesson that I learned. Do you reckon you knew deep down when you were in the moment and then like you let those people like kind of push it over the edge or do you, were you, were you like genuinely naive to it? That's a good question. Um, I would, I would say, when I would, <laughs> I don't even know, man. It, it, it's, I want to say I knew, I want to say I knew. Um, but then again, it was more so they had me having so much fun and the distractions that I would almost forget what I really had a gut instinct about. Mm. Um, like for example, I'd line up on a race to go race and yeah, I could have been in the fastest one there. But dude, I would fade or I'd get tired or, or I wouldn't start fast because I'd be afraid to get in tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a huge thing yeah. that not a lot of people actually admit. That like yeah. how many people get bad starts all the time? <laughs> Motherfucker, you don't want a good start. You don't, you don't want to be in front. You don't want a fucking good yeah. You know how I know that? Because I don't want a good start. Because I know <laughs> I suck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. No, it, it it's you know, when and then when I would fade or I'd get tired, I'd be like, fuck, man, I got to get home. I got to train. I got to get better. I got to do my motos. And then I'd go and I'd be having a bad day at the track and my bike doesn't feel good or the track is just terrible that day. And it's just, it's, you know, it could be dogs barking in the background. The sun yeah. could be in my eyes, whatever it could be, you know? And yeah. it's like, oh, man, fuck, I don't want tomorrow's to. Tomorrow's a new tomorrow's day. A new yeah. day. Let's yeah. just start tomorrow. Yeah. And then guess what? Tomorrow was the same thing because yeah. my mindset was, oh, I can just do it tomorrow because once you quit the first time and the second and the third, it just becomes so easy and so natural just to just quit. Yeah. That it was just what I did. Yeah. You know, and and I talk to people, you know, all the time about stuff like that. And they're like, Wow, you're at least you can admit it. I'm like, why would I hide? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I had probably I had some of the most talent on oh, a dirt dude, bike, you're period. Fucking unbelievable. And then I just squandered it. I yeah. literally wrote off the talent my entire career. I was talking to Dungey at, at Redbud last year, and I'm like, dude, the only year I trained realistically was in 2013. Yeah, and look at what happened. And I then. almost and I almost won. He goes, What do you mean you almost trained? Like he's like, I literally only really trained that year really, really hard. And I almost won. Yeah. And I'm like, that's only <laughs> <laughs> the year that I besides besides 06 and you know and whatnot but that's yeah besides that no I was hurt every year I was I was yeah. in a funk every year I was having fun every year 
so yeah, it, it kind of caught him off guard, I think, when I said that I only trained that one year. Yeah, because he trained literally his yeah. entire life as and the, hard but look, as possible. But, yeah. but look what it did. Yeah. You know, it, hard work will outdo talent 10 out of 10 times. Yeah. You know, and, and that's, those are the shoes that I put on. Yeah. Do you think, uh, like, because I, I guess it's like fairly well known that like you and your mom had like the fallout and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And do you think that, there's a part, this is not me making excuses for you, but do you think that there's a part where you were just like regimented your entire life yeah. to like get to the big show, to get the factory ride, to like make, the, it was just like drilled. You almost didn't have a childhood <laughs> and then you get the ride, you win a championship in 06. I'm sure you were getting good money and you just go like, you know what? Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> because like I can fully see that being a world where like, like I could see that being like yeah. a, an acceptable thing because it's like, dude, there's so many kids. You just didn't get a childhood, you know? And all honestly, like in a roundabout way, I can see where that, that could be. I don't think it was necessarily that because I, I truly believe I had one of the best childhoods that you could ever ask for when it comes to well, that's what, awesome. what I was doing, where I was going, how I was traveling, who I was hanging with, the races I was going. All I want to do is ride my dirt bike. Yeah. Okay. So I got to ride my dirt bike all the time. And, and as a child with, if that's all you want to do and you got to do it, you know, yeah, that, that was my dream. That's why we moved to Georgia <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I got to ride every day where when I lived in Florida or you know, St. Cloud, I got to ride twice a week or once a week and then race on the weekend, whether it be Biffalo, Gainesville, Reddick, you know, Dade city, um, County line. Like I get, I got to race those on the weekend, but that's why I moved to Georgia so we can ride every day. Yeah. Um, so for me, yeah, I had a good childhood, but my childhood was, I would say very strict. Um, and regimented 100 percent. you know my, my curfew obviously but you was, like was wanted to do it yes but then as i got older you know it's like okay i'm doing all the work i think it burnt me out yeah quite, yeah from being so young doing it yeah and you know one thing that i you know that i read back in the day is if, if you get burnt out in something that it's not for you but i i would argue that point because i was burnt out i just needed i needed some time to come back but in this industry you don't yeah, have time you don't get time yeah. and you know, if, if I could have taken a little bit of time off and, and just recouped and, and regrouped with everything that was going on in my life at the moment, I think it could have been way different for me. Yeah. Um. But, I mean, I was training from the time I was freaking eight years old. Yeah, 100%. And, and it was brutal. Yeah. It was a lot of work, you know, and, and moto after moto and, and wheelies and starts and figure eights and turn track and sprints and motos and motos and motos. And it's like, and the running. I hated the running. Uh, I still hate the running. Um, but yeah, it's just every day, yeah. you know, from the time you're eight years old until you're, you know, 19, it, it wore on me. Oh know? man, for sure. So, like, so Townley, his kid's really good. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen Yeah, yeah I saw right. him last yeah. year. Yeah. So, but he's saying that he's so keen, just wants to work every day, wants to do yep. everything all the time. And he's like nine or 10 or whatever. And Ben's like, fuck, <laughs> tries to tell, he's like, Hey man. I've loved this about you. Yeah. And this is great. But there is, trust me, you can burn yourself out on this. Yeah. So, like, please, if you love this as much as you say you do, like, chill. Chill. No, <laughs> you know? and because and, it's gnarly to be a kid and to be that zoned in. And it's like yeah. at some point you figure out that there's more to life than a dirt bike. And and again, we are tiny compared to the world. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and it's that's why I'm okay with my son just chilling. I know he wants to do it so bad. And, and you know, the whole point of selling the home a couple of years ago was to move around. And my wife got a job and, and which was a you know dream job for her. So we're like, okay, fuck, we'll stay. Um, and, and it's great. My son, he goes and rides and dude, I can literally sit back and just watch him ride. And, yeah. and I don't care, yeah. you know, like, yeah, he got hurt and that's unfortunate, but he didn't crash or anything. He literally just, he dropped his leg off the peg. That's his own fault. Um, but I, 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 I don't care, you know, if, if he goes fast, if he goes slow, okay, cool, great. You yeah. know, the only thing I start to get irritated with is if I tell him to do something and that's going to keep him safe and he doesn't yeah. do it, that's when I get mad. Yeah. Um, or if he tells me, dude, like, let's go here. I'm telling you, I'm going to do good. And he goes out and he rides like a pansy. Then I'm like, dude, like, why did we come? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I get, if you're going to go, let's just say, let's go have fun. Let's go do it. Yeah. Um, but no, for me being burnt out, everyone just getting burnt out as a young age, and then, and then the whole drinking scene, drinking scene came about, you yeah. know, in in my era. Yeah, um, and that was a big, big 
big thing. Um, that's where they were leading me down. Yeah. And it was like, I didn't realize how much destruction that would have on my body at a young age, you know, yeah, 20, dude. 21 years old. And yeah, because that was the after party era. Uh huh. Like they actually were after parties and heavy after parties on a Saturday night after the race, you yeah. know, and then you go home Sunday and, and whatever. And then you go Monday, Tuesday, ride, maybe Thursday, ride, depends on, you know, how you feel. You sometimes didn't ride Monday because you're still trying to recover from the Saturday night. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then bike rides were, you know, far and few between. And, um, but yeah, I'm, I don't care how open I am about that stuff anymore it's it was it's part of of my yeah. career you yeah. know um fuck how many athletes get wasted every saturday like, <laughs> it's so looked down upon in our sport it, or it's it's so like hidden in our sport but we have to way. be so mentally clear and and honestly alcohol does so much damage to your body yeah you know and um it, it's insane the amount of destruction it does that you don't even realize yeah um especially when you're in top shape which i I hardly ever was (laughs) yeah so you got to add in the fact that i wasn't in top shape and i was doing that and i was eating like shit i mean my trainer would bring me a coffee cake every freaking morning that i would go race what and because that's what i wanted because it sounded good i didn't know i didn't i didn't know any different so you basically were just like paying a dude yeah and then the dude was like i want to keep getting paid so whatever the fuck he wants me to do i'll just do but he wasn't like a real trainer i mean I, i i won you know, a few rounds with him. I did. I I did win, you know, and, and I'm not saying that it's just him. You know, it was uh, people, other people that I had around me as well. And it's just, I wish the food and I wish the drinking and I, I wish learning about the stuff that I know now was implemented back into my program back then. Because mm. it could have, I think, changed my program around pretty fast back in the day when my mom and I went our separate ways. Yeah. Um, and I never got that. You know, everything that I know now, everything that I'm able to teach Julian and Benny and and all the guys that I work with, I'm I've taught myself. Yeah, you know? yeah. And yeah. I've learned through a few other trainers that I've had and that were really good trainers. Um, you know, it's like like, you know, Ezra Lusk, he taught me so much. You know, Pablo taught me a ton. Pete Colson taught me a, a ton, you know, and and being with those group of guys, my entire career, you know, not my entire career, but the entire end of my career, it, it, it changed how I thought about stuff, how I processed things, how my mindset was, which is where the whole Millsats mindset thing comes into play. Now it's, it's like, okay, I'm not that guy anymore. I, I know what not to do. So let's do it the right way, mm. you know, or, or the way that, you know, <laughs> a way, a different way than what I did it. Um, and kind of just spun, spun out of control in the beginning and in the end like i said those guys were around me and and i had it all figured out my last year had it all figured out mm. and i was on another level and then it ended ended uh one year too soon yeah, yeah. so but all in all you live and you learn right we're excited to announce the launch of our new membership site gypsytales.com packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125. Gypsy Gang.